Hello, I'm Dr. Fraser, and in this video I'm going to show how to use p-threads to sum up some numbers, basically a simple task. This is going to be a sequence of videos. In this first video we're going to demonstrate how to pass a value in as a pointer, but return an answer using global data. In later videos I will show how to use it, uh, p-threads, with pointers going in and out. So to start with, let's get the uh, kind of the context here. I've got a program kind of partially written here that will accept some arguments uh, in the main, and if you've got the wrong number of arguments, it will simply uh, tell you you've got a problem. So I will just simply run my make, and then we'll run that program. It tells me there's a problem. If I say I want to sum numbers here, it doesn't do anything at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to make add numbers between 0 and, in this case, 3, and we're going to do that on a background thread. So, the first thing we're going to want to do is um, get this the uh, arguments extracted. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to use long longs so that I can have very long numbers to demonstrate how long processing can take on a background thread. And let's call this one limit. And we're going to pull this out of using uh, ASCII to long long, which looks like at all. And this is going to be argv sub 1. So now I've got the actual number I want to, to work with. I now need to figure out how to make this sort of happen on a background thread. So I'm going to start by writing the code that does the summation first. To understand what that function's going to look like, let's have a look at the uh, function that's going to create the thread. So I'm going to man pthread create. And that's going to show me the help text on what's going on here. The interesting part here is we pass in a to this function pthread create. We pass in some pointers to thread, data type. Uh, we pass in some uh, attributes to start it with. But critically here, we're going to pass in a pointer to a function. So a function pointer in C is basically saying we're going to run this as being our thread function. It's going to be the where we start executing the thread from. And we can see the data type here. It is going to pass return a void star. So it returns us a pointer, and it accepts a void star. So in C, void star means basically pointer to anything. Void being nothing, but it's a pointer basically to anything here. So we're going to name it whatever we like and pass in a pointer to our pthread create function. And the function that we're going to create has to have a void star return type. And I'm going to call this one sum runner runner, runnable, these sorts of things indicate sort of it being a thread. And so I'm going to put in here void star, and let's call it pr uh, arg. So I've now got my function here, and I'm going to put a comment on it just so we can follow along what it's going to do. This is going to be the uh, thread function to generate sum of 0 to n, where n is the number we're looking for. So it may not be clear at the moment, but this arg is going to be, we're going to make it a pointer to a long long. We'll just make sure that inside of main, when we set up this pointer, we'll make sure it's the right type. So long long, and I'm going to split it up into a couple steps. So I'm going to call this one limit ptr. So this is going to be my point limit to the pointer, and I'm going to do a cast here. I don't really need to, oops, I need this a pointer. And I'm going to make this a long, long pointer. And it's going to arg. So I'm typecasting a void star to a long, long star. Now, if I wanted to, I can go long, long limit equals, and I can dereference limit ptr. That's maybe a good way to walk through what the pointer is going to do for me. I would normally not do this into the two steps, but it's good enough for the moment. Now, I want to sum all values between 0 and n, in this case my limit. So I'm going to do, well, I'm going to first come up with a sum. So long, long sum equals 0. And then for, I'd normally go int i, but I'm going to go long, long i equals 0. i less than my limit. In fact, I want to do less than or equal to my limit. i plus plus. Sum plus equals i. So that's the basics there. Um, in C, unless you're using C99 or the GNU extensions, you can't declare a variable in a for loop here. So I am, I'll show you my make file. In my make file that I'm running here, I am passing in the dash 
std space or equals c99 um, flag to cause it to allow me to do use just this. Okay, so now I've got my answer here, and I'm just going to put what to, to do with the answer. That's something we've got to figure out. So I'll put to do on that. Okay, so this is starting to look okay. I've got a, a function that we looked up what the f type should be, the uh, prototype. We've implemented that. We said, well, we're going to make sure that what gets passed in as a pointer, which is my void star, we're going to make sure we can extract the data from that. Once I've extracted it correctly, I'm then going to run my function here. Okay, so let's go back down to my main, and let's start writing the actual code to execute this uh, thread. So, if we look at pthread create, we have to pass it in a uh, pthread uh, data type, and so this is going to be my thread ID usually. So I'm going to put it created here, p so thread ID, p thread um, type def, and let's call this TID thread ID. Now. The next parameter here is some attributes. We can look up what those are. Basically, it controls what the thread is going to, how it's going to function. So, create attributes. This is going to be a type pthread underscore attr underscore t, and I'm going to call it attr. So, actually creating that. And then there's a special function that will initialize this uh, data structure. So, pthread attr underscore init and I pass it in a pointer to my uh, data, or my, yeah, my variable. So attr, I'll pass it the address of that. So this will create the attributes. I've already got the thread ID there, and so now I can actually make this happen. So I can call pthread create, which does the real work here for me. I'm going to pass it in the address of my thread ID so that I can check which thread it is that I'm working on. I then pass it in the address of my attributes for it to pull that out, and then I pass it in the uh, function that I wish to execute, which was my sum runner, sum underscore runner. I don't put any brackets here. If I did, I would be executing this function, and the return value would be passed in to pthread create. I want to pass a function pointer. So I don't put any bracket at the end, and now it's a function pointer. And then finally, I have here uh, the arguments. I have to pass it some arguments in. So we see over here we're passing in a void star arg. So I need to pass this in a pointer to the appropriate data. Well, I've already got that limit up above. Right here I pulled the limit out of my command line arguments. So let's pass that in. I can't just pass in the limit because limit is a long long and I need some sort of pointer. So I'm going to pass it in a reference or it's, pardon me, the address of that variable. So now we're getting close. If I simply run at the moment, the main is going to come through, do all this work, create this, launch the thread, and then exit immediately. We don't want it to exit immediately. We want to wait until the thread is done. So wait until thread is done its work. So here I'm going to use pthread join, much like uh, functions for our, uh, your processes, where you call join. And I pass in the thread ID. I don't want to do anything with the return value at the moment, so I'm going to use null, which is to say I don't want to capture it. So that's getting there. Now, this is going to then wait. I said I didn't want to grab the answer from null. I'm not going to return it this way. I'm going to use a different way to pass back data from my uh, pointer. Now let me just uh, stretch this out a little bit so we get a little more on the screen. There you go. So up here, I need to somehow pass back the answer. We're in a thread, so we're going to have two threads. One thread, which is the main thread, starts here, continues execution until it hits the wait, holds here, and then finishes and quits the program. My second thread, spawned by pthread create, comes into my sum runner, executes down to here. It's all going to be inside the same address space. So either thread can access the same global data. So let's demonstrate that by creating. That's where we're going to put our answer. So I'm actually just going to move that local variable called sum, and I'm going to put it up here as a global variable. So the sum 
created or computed by the background thread. And because up here I am now computing the sum, I can now use sum way down here at the very end. So after we're done, I can print f sum is percent LLD for long, long, show in decimal, and the sum. So I now have the answer is, so I'll maybe I'll put a note in here, uh, sum is a global variable so other threads can access. And the last thing I need to do is I need to say, well, my thread needs to finish. And the easy, a good way to do that is pthread exit, and I'll put in zero because I'm not actually going to be returning anything. This value, whatever I put into the exit, gets passed back here if this was non-null. I'm basically not using it, so I pass back a zero here, which is sort of a null pointer. And down here, the null means um, pthread join is smart enough to say, look, you passed me a null, so I'm not actually going to catch the answer. OK. So, let's see where we're at. So I'm going to come back over here into my main. I'm going to make clean. I'm going to call make. So I got a number of errors. We can start to walk this through. Um, I'm going to actually go back into Eclipse. And I'm going to control B to build so that I actually get all of the errors in here much faster. So let's pull those up. So we get a lot of implicit declarations. Anytime you get an implicit declaration, warning it would normally be, but I've turned on uh, treat warnings as errors. That means that you base you probably forgot to hash or er, hash include a uh, appropriate file. So as it turns out, that's exactly the problem. So I need to hash include pthread. I know I need to p include pthread.h because I can come back over here, um, man pthread create, and it'll tell me up here at the top I need to hash include pthread.h. So let's go back in here, save, build, and now we're looking pretty good. Except, not quite good enough. I get here some undefined references to pthread create and pthread join. Now, I have hash included the right files, but these are actually coming from the linker. So this is the error LD, LD is my linker. So the linker returned a 1 exit status, meaning it failed. Now what's going on here is it's trying to use the functions. I didn't write them, I didn't code them, and they're not linked by default. So I have to go into my make file, and I have to here add the uh, pthread parameter. Uh, and this will tell you that I'm going to now link the pthread library. So this will link in the appropriate functions. Go back into my code, build. Check the error log here. Nothing. We're looking good, which means that it correctly built my file. So I have now here my sum on threads. Sum on threads. Let's just test it with a three. Sum is six. That looks good. Four, five, and so forth. So now I can put in big numbers. And now it's going to compute for quite a while. I have here the monitor. It's a system monitor under Ubuntu, and we can see that my processor is maxed out. I have four processors, and only one of them is maxed out. Now, one of the big values of having multi -threads, multiple threads in your application is that you can begin to exploit the multiple processors in your system. Uh, I'm running inside of a virtual machine here. I've mapped four processors over to Linux. So it's, as we see here, not, not really able to use the rest. You'll note that occasionally Linux will switch processors. So it was on my orange CPU 1 for a while. It then switched over to CPU 2 and is maxing that out for quite a while here. I'm not quite sure how long that'll take. I'm going to control C to kill it. Let's go back and make this run a bit faster. And let's keep adding a bit longer to it until we get some number that takes a while, but not forever. So we can see here the processor starts to max out. And fairly shortly, it should drop down. I'll leave that for a moment. So the interesting thing about running this program is after this pthread create and between the join, I could do a fair amount of interesting work. So I could do other stuff here. So for, well, we can see just in passing that now my answer has been computed. And here's my fairly large answer. It turned out to be too big because it overflowed. So I'll keep that in mind for the next time I run that. So I could do this other interesting stuff between the pthread create and the pthread join. I could, for example, spawn other threads to do the work, do some other work, or I could 
do some other interesting computation. I could interact with the user. There's so many different things here that I could do, and I would then possibly be running on a different processor, or at least seeming to run concurrently with the background work. Um, if I wanted to build, incidentally, just straight from the uh, command line, I'll show that here, make clean. If I wanted to run GCC, uh, yeah, GCC on this file, I say, well, I want to compile some on thread.c. I need to use std equals c99, because I did use the uh, variable declaration inside the for loop. I need to pass in pthread so that it will actually link in the appropriate library. And I'm going to go dash o, and let's call this one manual. And it will then compile manual. And let's put in 10 here just to show it does run. So if you're looking, that would be the command line if you're not using a complex make file. Okay, thank you very much for watching. There'll be a couple other videos following this that show how to use uh, threads by passing information around in alternative manners.